All right, I'm back. Yay. Perfect. I will, uh, so to reintroduce myself, I'm Colin Lowenberg from Akash Network. Uh, you can check out our website, akash.network. Uh, and I'm going to be going through uh, all of our developer tools and get you guys started in this call. So uh, hopefully by the end of this call, uh, you'll feel pretty comfortable with uh, using Akash to run your uh, run any application that you want. Cool. Go for it. All right. Cool. Share. Can you guys see see my screen? <laughs> yep. Sure. You sure can. One second. <laughs> uh, well, so for those that are not familiar with Akash, um, you can find us uh, on the Sovereign Gitcoin. Um, it's still loading on my computer, loading a little bit slower. Um, Akash is a cloud marketplace for you to run any application. Um, so we do not really compete with any cryptocurrency companies. We really compete with Amazon Web Services. So a lot of cryptocurrency companies are still using centralized today. Uh, as much as we're building out the decentralized uh, finance industry and the decentralized webs still growing and still emerging. Um, and two years ago, I feel like this wasn't really feasible and possible to do. Today, uh, it's possible to run your entire application on a decentralized st stack. Um, so we are the decentralized cloud for compute. Um, and what that means is you may want to run your application uh, on Amazon and you're going to pay you know, $5 an hour for some server that you're uh, hosting on Amazon or Heroku or Google or Azure. Uh, but instead, I'm going to show you why you should consider using Akash to run your applications. Um, sorry for the slowness on my computer today. <laughs> Never seen uh, the internet go so slow. So if you're on, if, if you go to the Gitcoin for Sovereign, you can see uh, we have three different challenges. Uh, each one of these, uh, I've put prizes of a hundred thousand up to one hundred thousand um, dollars. That those prizes will be split across all three of these challenges. Um, we will let our community vote. So the judges will be uh, our team internally to qualify and make sure that uh, you meet the basic minimum requirements. And then we're going to have our community vote on the best solution. Uh, and we will award prizes from that $100,000 uh, across all three of these challenges to any and all devs that qualify and meet, you know, meet the challenges. Um, now, Akash, I'm going to walk through if this... Uh, wants to there you go so if you go to akash.network you can read about akash uh, how are you going so slow all right well i'm just going to skip right out of the google docs presentation check out docs.akash.network uh, and you can find all the documentation everything that i'm talking about and we'll send out this presentation so you can find out more um, without me having go slow on here. So uh, again, Akash is an open source cloud. So everything is open source and you can contribute to the Akash project. Uh, you can deploy any Docker container to our cloud, just like you would to Amazon or Heroku. Um, but the big difference with Akash is that we're open source and so you can, and you can define your price. So as a developer, you get to define exactly how many gigabytes of RAM you want, how many CPUs you want, how many gigabytes of storage you want, but you also, just like you would in a Docker Compose file, except now you also define your price. So the developer sets the price and then our provider network will then bid on your deployment. So you will not actually have to choose the pricing from Amazon, Google, you decide how much you wanna pay for your cloud hosting. Uh, and then the providers will bid on you. And then you actually bid on chain, uh, you accept those bids. And so you strike leases um, and I've run out of memory. That's hilarious. One second. That's amazing. I guess I'm gonna have to upgrade to the new M1 Mac. Um, sorry about that guys. Um, so you can build any application you want on Akash. For example, if you go to pin.akash.host, you can see one of the community members has built a Pinterest clone that's running entirely on Akash. 
Um, at the same time, you may want to have backups or uh, static storage because uh, we're leasing out Docker containers. Essentially, you have a stateless Docker container. So if it goes down, you don't have a backup. So what we've developed is a way to back up your Docker containers, either taking a snapshot or backing up your database to some storage host. So in, in this case, for this application, we actually use a Postgres database backup to see a network or Skynet. Um, so this application was built on Ruby on Rails, so it can't run on Skynet or decentralized storage. It needs a compute. It needs a server. So Akash is the host for the application, and Sia or Skynet is the backup for the application. So it's possible to build all of your application on a decentralized cloud, both compute and storage. If you're looking for other examples of applications that have already been built, um, any open source application that can be put into a Docker container can be run on Akash, but we've also tested out quite a few things. So we've tested out a lot of games, we've tested out a lot of nodes for blockchains, um, and one of the challenges today is for someone to run a sovereign node on Akash. So we want you to submit you, all of your hackathon submissions to our App Depot. So if you go to appdepot.io, you can see our GitHub and you can actually uh, make, a, make a pull request there and you can submit your SDL file. Your SDL file is your stack definition language file. And that's essentially your submission for the hackathon is showing that you can deploy on Akash by creating an SDL file. Um, and that file, as I said, defines what, you know, what CPU you need, also defines what images you're going to run on the network and defines the price that you want to pay. Um, so we've, I've also written up a lot of documentation. So if you go to docs.akash.network, we've got a getting started guide. Uh, because I started a little late, I don't think I'm going to have time to walk through it on this live stream. I just did a live stream two weeks ago. I was able to get through this entire documentation in under an hour. It, should it shouldn't take you more than an hour to get going. If you have any trouble with this, please contact me. I'm on Discord. I'm in the Sovereign chat. I'm happy to walk you through this documentation. We can set up a time and do a presentation for a group or an individual. Happy to walk through it. Um, feel, please try to get through this first before talking. Get your wallet set up and I will fund your wallet. So we want you to get started working on Akash. So you don't have to qualify for the challenges to get some free Akash. We will give you free AKT just to get started. Um, now, why would you use Akash? You're saying, you might wonder, like, why would we compete with Amazon? How are we going to beat Amazon in their own game? Amazon is a giant monopoly, and they have very low costs compared to Google and Microsoft. However, we can undercut Amazon's prices significantly because we are using a crowdsourcing model for, for getting our cloud providers. We actually are seeding our market with Equinix tier four data centers around the world. They have over 220 data centers around the world, and we are now leasing out Equinix on our blockchain. So you can actually get a Docker container running on Equinix bare metal with a, with a Kubernetes cluster behind it, and you can now do that at 66% off of the Amazon prices. So about one third the cost of Amazon to run on Akash. So long term, we're a better solution for nodes and validators and anything that's a highly uh, demanding application, for example, a sovereign node. Um, of course, nothing is complete without a community. Uh, because Akash is an open source project, anyone can contribute. It's also a permissionless network, so anyone can be a cloud provider and anyone can build and run on Akash. This means that it's censorship free. That said, the community can make decisions. And if you want to join our community, go to discord.akash.network. There's also folks to help you there. If I'm not responsive because I'm asleep, you can always go find another engineer working there in the, in the community who's willing to help. Um, so I've got three challenges now for you. The first challenge is a sovereign node challenge. I want to see a sovereign node running on Akash. Now, I know this is possible because we've seen uh, we've got nodes for uh, Solana, nodes for Cosmos, node for Akash. We run our own validators on the Akash network. Our own website runs on the Akash network. Um, and I would love to see the sovereign network running on the Akash uh, blockchain uh, leases to get your cloud. So I would really, really like to see that. Uh, and that will, will give you up to $1,000 just to get started during this hackathon. And at the end of the hackathon, we'll vote. 
and the winner of that vote will get $10,000. Uh, and if you continue to work on this application after the hackathon, we'll give you up to $100,000. Uh, so that's our commitment to the sovereign ecosystem is that $100,000. At the same time, we also want to support open cloud uh, technologies. So if you go into this, we want to see someone build uh, the open source cloud with us. And so if you can start contributing to our project and building this open source cloud and building the decentralized web, uh, we need your help to do that. So we're giving a prize uh, similar $100,000 to help us build out uh, that, that ecosystem. Um, so if you can join our Discord and write a forum post on our forum describing what you want to build, um, build an open source application that uses Skynet uh, and Akash or Handshake and Akash, uh, something that really shows how developers can do this and then write a guide about it. So the key here in this submission is to write a guide teaching others how they can build decentralized web applications. Um, and so this one is really about education more than just supporting uh, the so The first one is about sovereign and building a partnership with them. Second one is about helping other developers build the open source cloud. The third challenge that I want you guys to consider doing is building us a UI. Uh, because we are really focused on developers, uh, we haven't really launched our UI yet. It's in process uh, and it is coming, I've seen it, but we really need the community to step in and build a UI. We wanna see what you can build. So please try to build a UI that allows developers to easily build and deploy on Akash. So today, uh, in order to run on Akash, you need to use our command line. Um, so the way to do that is following our docs on, on our docs.akash.network. You can walk through the steps. Basically, you install the Akash CLI, and then you can choose a network, and you can create a wallet, and then I will fund your account. Um, so just message me on Discord uh, or, or set up a time with me to chat, and we will fund you and get you the AKT you need to get started. Um, and then once you've got it in running, uh, we will continue to fund you and put you up for vote uh, for any of these challenges. And we would like you to post uh, those challenges on Gitcoin, uh, but we'd also like you to post those on our forum so that our community can vote on that. We want our community to be involved in the voting process. Um, so here are the important links. I'm gonna add one more link here. Uh, so if you wanna schedule support time with me, you can actually just go to easybook.io and you can book me. So because we didn't, I didn't get started right away, I wanna make sure that I follow up with each of you guys. If you want help, you can schedule me with easybook.io. Um, and you can find example apps on appdepot.io. Uh, now, if you check out the docs page, go right through there. You can you can jump in right here and you can see we've got an overview, install, everything that I just told you about. It's all right here in the documentation. Um, and if you want to see an example application, check out pin.akash.host. You can see this is a Pinterest clone with some cute puppies running on Akash. So if you can run a Pinterest clone, you can run any application. Um, as well, we recently launched facesofcrypto.io. We're hosting this entire application and website um, on Akash. So any website, any node, any validator, anything you need to run on a server, you can run on Akash. So we would love to see what you guys can build in this hackathon. Um, and I will ha be happily walk through the setup process with you. Um, it's as simple as going through the, that guide. Um, to pause there and see if there's any questions from the audience. Um, feel free to ask me questions. Do we have any questions from the audience? I don't see any. All right. Thank you guys for uh, uh, listening to me talk. I'm going to try to uh, give you guys the time to reach out to me. Uh, I'll be in that Discord chat ready to chat with you guys um, and giving out free AKT. Uh, for you at any point throughout the next uh, few weeks. Um, and if I'm not responsive, you can always book a calendar time with me on easybook.io. Uh, when you go to there, please make sure you select developer support um, so that I'm not too confused uh, where you're coming from. So uh, if you go there, just make sure you please click customer support uh, and schedule some time through that link um, rather than a partnership discussion. Um, So just to summarize, uh, if you're interested in running on Akash, we are the decentralized cloud and we're ready for you to deploy any 
anything you want in a Docker container to our cloud uh, quickly and easily. Um, and if you need funding to get started, just message me. Thanks, Alan Server. I don't think I have time to go through the uh, the entire. Dude, man, you like banged through that yet fifty minutes. Oh, okay. Well, we have if we have time, let's do it. I'll, I'll you deploy. Have, you have another thirty minutes. Oh, okay, great. I'll, I'll, let's do it. Uh, I didn't think we had time. All right, let's do it. Yeah. The whole. All right. Go for it. All right, cool. So we're gonna go through the docs right now. Just go through it with me, everybody. I want you to step by step learn how to use Akash. So the first step when you're setting up uh, your environment, we're just gonna do this uh, on command line right here on, on Bash. Um, and you wanna select which network you're gonna run on. Um, very serious, I want everyone to run on mainnet. So go ahead and choose the mainnet. Um, as you're going through, you wanna set up variables on your command line. Um, that's how our documentation is written. So if you're not familiar with variables, you just take a variable like this and set it equal to what you'd like. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And now I've set that, uh, that network variable on my command line. I'm also gonna set my version, which is gonna pull the URL. And then I can also set my chain ID. So I'm basically setting up my variables in my bash. If you close your uh, terminal window, note that you're gonna lose all those local variables and it, you'll have to reset your variables if you close your window. Um, also, you'll be able to pull uh, the seed nodes once you've set up these three variables, the Akash network, I'm set, I've set it to mainnet, I've set the version here and I've set the chain ID. Now I can do a curl statement and I can get all of our seed nodes. You can see the IP address of all of our seed nodes and you can see the peer nodes. So you can essentially see what servers you're talking to. Um, also, we want to get, you can also get it, use the echo command right here. So let's set up our Akash node. We've now selected a specific node to be the node that we want to talk to. And I can then echo that node. So if you type echo and then your variable, you get your node, uh, you get the response back. So you can see I've got uh, my node configured to this IP address right here. Um, also, I can just print a random endpoint right here. And I can see what endpoint I'm talking to this port on this node. So let's do, let's go ahead and install Akash now. Um, I might skip this step since I'm already installed. Uh, but if you're on a Mac, you just run this command to install Homebrew. If you already have Homebrew, I hope you do. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Just do a brew tap to our repo overclock and then brew install Akash. Uh, once you've installed Akash, um, you can also do force it to link the Akash uh, CLI command. Uh, and once you've done that, you can then verify that you have Akash installed. Akash version, and you'll get you'll check to see your version right here. Now, the version of the network might be different. It's okay, we're backwards compatible, but just to check the network version, do a curl of the version. You can see the version of my installed is 12.2, and the version of the network is 12.1. So the command line utility is essentially the same thing that's running on the node. So if you want the installing this command line utility is actually the first step in installing the node. So it's good that they're they're backwards compatible. So now I want you to set up your wallet for me. And this is the wallet address that I'm gonna need you to send me to fund you. Um, and I want to do that personally because I wanna prevent anyone from you know ha hacking us and trying to get too many uh, tokens from us. So I wanna you know, have a personal conversation with you guys uh, before I send you the, the tokens. So if you wanna create a uh, key, you can uh, type Akash Keyring backend right here, uh, derive a new private key using this, and you'll see a response similar to this. Um, now, you can also do this with a ledger. Um, once you do this, it's gonna create uh, a, um, a new key on your computer. Now, note that the Keyring backend, you wanna leave this as a default uh, of OS. It'll require you to log in uh, if you set it to test. So uh, you'll have to type keyring back in uh, into every one of your commands. Um, so it's it's a little bit of extra step there. But before you do this command, you need to set your key name. So when you set up your wallet, you want to set a key name. So I'm going to set it for uh, Colin, you know, test. I can type that key in and I can set my keyring back in. I want to set that to OS or leave it to default. Um, now, once you've got a uh, new key derived locally, you run this command right here. 
Um, before I do that, I want to, I've already created my keys. So I'm just do a keys list. So you can see I've already got my key created. I'm, I don't want to have to redo it, but you can just go in and do keys add. And now I have Akash keys. So you'll see a response like this. When you see this response, write down your mnemonic phrase. That's important for you. If you want to recover your Akash address, you can do that using the mnemonic phrase. So save that in a secure location. Um, if you're just doing this for the hackathon, great. But you, I, I highly recommend even for hackathons to be secure and, and save your information into a secure file um, and store that somewhere or print it out onto a piece of paper. Um, that's generally what I would recommend doing. Um, I, for example, for this, I, I don't mind if, uh, if you just, you know, use, save it on your computer, but if we're going to continue funding you, you want to make sure you store this securely. So if you want, if you have a ledger, you can actually derive the key and store it on your ledger. So I highly recommend that if you have a ledger handy, um, if you don't have a ledger, highly recommend you get one. Um, also you can export your private keys. If that's something you want to do, um, from your, get them off your computer and store your private key. You can do that. Um, now, if you want to get your Akash address, you just run this command, Akash keys show. Um, and again, if you change the keyring backend to test, you'd have to keep this command in here. But the default is always OS. Uh, looks like looks like I set my key name to call and test. So I'm going to set it to Hackathon. So I'm setting my key name to Hackathon because that's the uh, key that I already have on my computer. And now I can see my address by running this command. Uh, and, you know, the short version of that would just be, say, Akash, keys, show, and then hackathon. I get the same information, but because we're using the variables, it makes my life a little bit easier because I don't have to remember all of these commands. It saves from dumb fingering. But the command right here, maybe I should zoom in a little bit just so you guys can see what commands I'm running here. But I just ran Akash, keys, show, hackathon. That's it. And I get my address. So copy this address. Send that to me in Discord, and we will fund your account. Next step is to fund your account. Now, this step you can skip over. I want you to read it. Please check it out. Understand how it works. You do want to set the Akash variables in here. Uh, make sure you have those set. Um, so I'm going to set the account address to that address that I, I just pulled out. So I'm going to do Akash account address. Uh, and I'm going to copy and paste my address right here, and I'm set my local variable for, variable for Akash account address. Uh, so relatively simple to do um, and not too complicated, right? You, now you have a wallet set up and you have all your variables set up, and I can now fund you. Um, now, if you wanted to fund yourself, you can also go to a faucet for the test net, uh, or you can purchase tokens on an exchange. We're on several exchanges like Bittrex and BHEX. Um, so if you want to get out there, I buy from Ascendex. Um, you know, those are, they're all good, uh, exchanges to buy from, but you know, I, I don't necessarily recommend specifically in one, any one exchange. Uh, they're all good. Uh, I will give you some free AKT tokens up to a hundred dollars, uh, without any qualification for this hackathon. I just need to know that you're a real person, uh, and do some, you know, basic checking before I give you, uh, AKT tokens. So I don't have a public faucet. I just want to chat with you. So now to deploy an application, this is where it gets fun. So now you're set up, you've got your wallet, I've sent you some funding. Um, now you've got to pick what app application you want to run. So in this guide, we're actually going to run Looney Lite, which is a non-custodial wallet that works with Akash. Um, now, if you click on that, you can go to the GitHub repo. It's totally open source um, and it you know it's a totally running application. I can also, at the end of this, you'll actually see it running. So this is the Looney Light wallet that we're going to build and run on Akash. Now, before we begin, obviously, if you haven't done Docker deployments before, this might be a little bit new to you. If you don't have your application already in a Docker image, you're going to have to Dockerize your, your application and put it into a Docker container and, and create that image in order to get it running on Akash. Um, so I can help you with that, but I'm not going to walk through how to use Docker in this presentation. Um, I also highly recommend just going to Docker's website and figuring it out from there, uh, but happy to send you the documentation how to use Docker. Um, now, let's make sure that all of our variables are set before we create a deployment. We want to make sure all these things are set. Um, so I can do a quick echo. 
Touch node, I've got my node set up. Um, I've got all these things set up, right? So I know these variables are set. Um, you can verify that you have it right by just doing this echo right here and getting all that information. I see it looks good. Um, no problem there. I double check my key name. Looks good, hackathon. Um, I can export my address from the key name again and then check that again one more time. Boom, it's the same one ending in CJX. That's my account. Uh, now I can check my balances. So now I'm interacting with the Akash blockchain. I want to check my balance. I say Akash query bank balances. Um, and I'm using all those variables after it node, Akash node, and Akash account address. Um, so I can see right here, I've got a balance of 450 uh, million Akash. Uh, the denomination is micro AKT or UAKT. <clears throat> so what I actually have here is 400. 52 AKT with this being after the decimal. But because the cost of compute is so low and our token is so high, we actually denominate it in UAKT. Uh, now, you should see your balance there once I send it to you. If you see a balance of zero, message me the account address again. So now we need to create a deployment file. So in order to take that over this open source repo and link it and set it up and configure it, for Kosh, we need to write a little software or stack definition file. And that's essentially like a Docker Compose file, but just a little bit different. So the syntax is the same, and you can easily see if you are familiar with Docker Compose files, we basically have the same syntax, what services you're going to run, what profiles you're going to run, and then what where you want to deploy it. Um, also, you can, you can get examples of SDL files from our awesome Akash repo. So this is essentially the product that we wanna see from you is an SDL file that you wrote that lets you deploy your open source code to our cloud. So again, you can also download this file using a curl just to make it a little bit easier. So you can pull that file right down to your computer. Um, SDL is not a programming language that you need to learn. It's just a definition file. So it's not very hard to figure out how to use that SDL file. If you want to walk through the docs a little slower, you're welcome to. And we have actually detailed definitions of how the SDL files work right here. Um, in here, you can see the CPU, memory, and storage. So it's relatively simple to read and use. Now, um, if you are running on our mainnet, we have a thing called audited attributes. So one of the attributes in this SDL file is to specify who you want to be hosted by. So anyone can host and anyone can be a provider on our network. So you don't really know who you're hosting from unless you say, hey, I only want to be hosted on a Akash uh, signed server. Now you, can, you don't have to use our signed servers. You can use any server you want, but I highly recommend just for this hackathon to stick to the servers that we recommend so that you don't have to deal with, you know, the server being, you know, you don't know where that server is. I, these are servers that we've audited. That doesn't mean that we have any permissions on our block. It's still permissionless, but we have audited these data centers. They are Equinix-backed data centers. They have over 20 different certifications. These are seriously secure data centers uh, in, in San Jose and Newark. So I highly recommend these servers. That said, you don't have to use the Akash uh, signed servers. Um, these two servers, as I said, one's in New Jersey, one's in California. Um, if you, we have, they, the Equinix actually has 220 locations around the world. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, limited to just these two servers in the future. These are just the two that we've audited and I recommend for this, uh, hackathon. If you're another part of the world, you might want to consider, uh, another server closer to you. Um, now to create the deployment, there's this command, Akash TX for transaction, cert create client. This is the most important step because you need to create a certificate that's stored on chain and secures your entire deployment. So this is our security measure is creating a certificate for your deployment. Only someone with the private keys and this certificate can actually make changes in your name on the blockchain. So this certificate is what signs your blockchain's transaction, the blockchain transaction. So you'll see uh, messages similar to this once you create that certificate. Um, I've already done it. You only need to do it once per account and it gets used across all of your deployments. If you wanted to like, 
have separation of security between different deployments. You could use different certificates. Um, and then once you've now created that certificate, you can now sign uh, your deployments. Um, so the way you run a deployment is you just type Akash TX deployment create and then the deploy.yaml. So that's the file that we're editing. The SDL file is deploy.yaml. Um, and I can open up my Sublime text if you guys want to see it in Sublime text real quick. This is my deploy.yaml file. Uh, you could download it with that curl statement. We can go in and we can see here's the signature. Say it's been audited by Akash. Here's the price that I want to pay. I want to pay up to 1.001 uh, uh, AKT or 1,000 uh, micro AKTs. This is the minimum that you should use. Don't go below 1,000 uh, UAKT because it, you probably won't get bids from providers. Um, this is going to be, you know, this is a very small amount. There's uh, uh, the if you need more than I give you, just message me, but we'll give you up to a hundred dollars for this hackathon just to get you started. Um, and that's roughly uh, 30 or, or 30 or 33 uh, AKT. So we'll send you 30 AKT to get you going in this hackathon. Um, and that's way more than you need to run a deployment uh, throughout the hackathon. Um, now to deploy on Akash, you can run this command. I'm gonna go ahead and run it, see if we are successful. Uh, in here, you'll notice in this command, the key name, the node name, the chain ID, and the fees right here. The fees in this command are the gas fees. So we make, this is how Akash makes money, is we collect those transaction fees. Those transaction fees go to pay the validators, the validator blockchain. There are 64 different validators on Akash. Uh, all of them have over 400,000 AKT. So they are staking. They are providing 56% APY to people staking on them. They are, uh, you know, professional validators and they are getting paid to host our blockchain. Uh, so that those fees are important and you can set the gas fees that you, you can set a limit to your gas fees right there. Um, if you, if you want to lower them a little bit, you can. Um, so I'm going to run this command. Akash deploy, cr deployment, create, deploy YAML with all those variables that we've already set up. So if you didn't have the variables set up, you got to type in the whole command. Uh, I like having the variables. It makes the documentation easier too. You get this nice block of text. You might want to copy paste this into sublime text to make it a little bit more readable. Um, and let me do that. So in here, I actually want to search for uh, a couple different numbers in here. I want to search for a D sequence. Uh, that's the deployment sequence. So the deployment sequence in here has a value right here, and you want to copy this out to a notepad. Um, the reason we want to copy that out, uh, you can see D sequence right here, is we're going to need that variable. So I just going to save that D sequence equals to this. So D sequence, you find that in your result of creating that deployment. So now we've put that deployment on our blockchain. But let's get it. Let's find out. Make sure that it's actually uh, open and created. Um, but I want to double check on it. So I'm going to set these variables on my command line so I don't forget them. Um, what was that number? I just put it in some text. So I'm going to copy paste this and I'm going to set that variable on my, my command line. Boom. I'm also going to set my O sequence to one and I'm going to set my G sequence to one. And I'd say, oh, Colin, what the hell? What is a D sequence, O sequence, and G sequence? It's actually really simple. The D sequence is your deployment number. The O sequence is the uh, the order number, and the G sequence is the group number. So if you had a lot of deployments, which some of our customers are going to have lots of groups and lots of orders and lots of deployments. So if you start putting in more and more deployments, you're going to have different orders and different groups. Uh, but right now, you, for your first time, it's going to be 1-1 one, one, and D sequence uh, is going to be equal to that number that you get in response to deploying the uh, to creating a deployment. So now we have these variables. Let's just double check them, make sure they're set up. Great. Um, so now we've posted that deployment to the blockchain. How do we know that it's actually getting bids back? We said, hey, we want to deploy this. Let's check the deployment was created by running this command. We're going to say Akash query deployment get. Pretty simple language, pretty simple command line. Just query all, all my deployments from this account address on this node with this D sequence. Boom, I do that. I can see my order is right here. I see the number at the top, the, the deployment sequence number, my owner address. And at the very bottom, 
it's very useful. It says state open. So just in case you guys can't see it, this is the result of creating a deployment on our blockchain. Now it's not running yet. We still have to look at the bids and accept one of the bids. So we should have gotten some bids by now. So let's go see if we got some bids. So let's query the market order and we're going to actually get the query, uh, the responses to our deployment. So I run this. We should start to see, we should see the order is now created. It's state open um, at the bottom. And you can view the bids by saying Akash query market bid list. So Akash query market bid list. And then that all of those uh, variables after that makes it really simple. Uh, and we can see we're getting bids now. So let's zoom out a little bit. You can see I've already got multiple bids. Um, I've got a bid here from this provider that ends in HCAL. So I, I want to see who is this provider. I can look them up. This is our, uh, this is their identifier right here, their address. Um, and I can see, uh, you know, my the balance of the account. It put five AKT, uh, five UAKT uh, into uh, a, a, an escrow account essentially has been created. And I've basically paid five AKT to create an account and, uh, now I need to accept that bid. So I'm going to go and choose this bid from this provider. So I want to set this provider right here. I'm going to use a, this Akash provider variable and I'm going to set it to this. It's like that. Obviously, double check my work. You know, I've got the account. All, the, all my variables are now created and I'm actually going to strike a lease. So now on the blockchain, I'm going to uh, make a lease and and, and then I can deploy my application uh, to this provider. So right here, I'm saying market lease create. So I'm going to create a lease with this provider. I've already set up all these variables, so I don't need to type them in. And it's going to confirm that I want to sign it with my certificate. So I'm saying yes, confirm the transaction before signing it. And now I'm going to broadcast that transaction to the blockchain, and I'm going to have a lease with my cloud provider. So. That's it. Now I have a lease. Let's see. Let's wait for a second. Give it a minute or a couple seconds. It's probably already done. Should be relatively quick. Uh, let's see. I here's my lease. Uh, I did a little. You run this command, Akash Market Lease List, to see my leases. And you can see my lease was created at this timestamp with this deployment, and the price was one new AKT. Um, and it looks like uh, where the lease is made on the blockchain. So that's great. We now have a uh, open lease with that cloud provider. Now, there's one more step that you have to do, which is go off chain. So we've now have an active lease on, you can see right here, the word state active. That's how we know that the lease is active. Um, so we went from an open state to an active state. Now we can close that lease if we wanted, but we wanna actually use the lease we're not actually running the application yet on that cloud provider. We need to send them the manifest. For security reasons, we don't put your entire manifest onto the blockchain. We just do the lease on the blockchain and the transaction on the blockchain, and you have an escrow account that's constantly paying that provider. Now, if you want, you need to connect directly to that provider and send your deployment YAML file to the provider. So your YAML file, your SDL file or stack definition is not actually stored on the blockchain. This needs to be off chain for security reasons because you might have some sensitive information in there. Um, and you know, that, that Docker image, you don't necessarily want to publish what Docker image you're publishing to this provider. Uh, so we're going to send it directly to them with this command, Akash provider send manifest. So this the, creates a tunnel using MTLS, um, which is, you can read about MTLS on our docs and it sends the manifest or your SDL file to the provider directly. So do this, done, okay. Now, you should not get any actual output from that, but you can check to make sure your lease status is in use. So let's do another lease status right here. Let's see, it looks like uh, the URI is right here. Looks like we're successful. We just launched this application. Uh, it's now running on our uh, cloud on that Equinix server that we chose. Um, and you can go to that URL right now. So let's open up a URL and see our application, see if it's running. 
there we go. This is the wallet that we I was talking about. Uh, we saw the open source repo for it earlier. Uh, this is Looney Light. I can you know explore the uh, Akash blockchain with this application. I can use the Kepler browser extension to create a, to add my wallet. I can link with my Ledger Nano, uh, and I can also continue without uh, without any address in there. Uh, you can just put an address in, and this application will run. Um, now you could do this with any software. You don't need to use Looney Light. You can use anything that's in our App Depot. Just go to AppDepot.io and find an SDL file, and you can run any of these things. So in here we've got. Um, Big Dipper, we've got Couch Database, we've got Drupal, you could do Postgres, you could do uh, Node.js, you could do Minesweeper, we could do Minecraft, Pancake Swap, you know. Uh, but the goal of this hackathon is not to just run these applications. We want to work with Sovereign. So ideally, we want you to jump in and start trying to get a Sovereign node running on the, the Akash uh, network. So then you can submit, it looks like, Oh, wow, that was fast. Uh, someone already added sovereign node deployment information to the awesome Akash repo. Let's see. It looks like someone someone's already submitted uh, one, one, one example. So that's awesome. There's a sovereign node uh, already added. Looks like it was done pretty recently. So check that out. Uh, update this. Try to improve upon this. And let's keep going. Let's keep building a better sovereign node uh, solution on top of Akash. Now, I want you to... You, you're going to want to make changes to your deployment. Obviously, uh, you know your first iteration is not your last. Uh, you're going to constantly want to update it. So we have a process to do that. So if you want to redeploy, obviously, you know you know how to use GitHub, but you also have to make sure that your cloud it gets updated. So if you want to do that after your application's got a new Docker image, just run update deploy.yaml. So it's the same command. Just we're just instead of creating a deployment we're updating a deployment. Um, so you just run this command, boom, you've updated it. Um, you do have to run the manifest as well. So you do the on-chain part saying, hey, I'm updating it. Then you do the off-chain part and send the deployment YAML file again. Um, and that's how you update your application. Um, if your deployment starts to run out of funding um, during the hackathon, uh, you need a little bit more, you can message me. Uh, if you go, if you need a lot of funding, you can also go buy more tokens on an exchange. But for this hackathon, I want to help fund you guys. So uh, this is how to deposit more. So after we give you a little initial just to get you started, uh, we'll give you more to keep you running. Um, now, uh, if you want to quit and you want to shut down your deployment uh, because you don't want to just keep spending money on a deployment that you're not using, uh, you know, you can keep the AKT that you don't use at the end of the hackathon uh, to deploy more applications in the future. Uh, if you want to pause your deployment or just you've decided not to use it, you can close your deployment with this command, Akash transit, transaction deploy close. Not too difficult. Um, now, an important thing you also want to learn how to do for debugging purposes is learn how to view your logs. So this, these are all of the diff possible logs right here. Um, I think we'll just do like uh, Akash D sequence, I think is all we need. Um, let me actually clear that. Let's do, do a, uh, a quick, let's just do like uh, Akash D provider lease logs and we'll do just the D sequence. If that works, that should be good. And that will start logging information. Um, you can also use the command line help as well. So if you run into any issues, you can always do akash.h to get more information uh, on something. Uh, and you can always refer to the documentation. We have a CLI uh, reference in here. So if you want to check that out. Um, also, I'm working on a new version of the docs, docs 2.0. So that'll come out uh, with uh, today or tomorrow. I'll be updating the main to docs 2.0. You're welcome to take jump ahead and see that new version of the docs. Uh, it's just slightly updated. So we'll be updating the docs with any FAQs, any questions you have. Uh, we'll have those in there. Um, please don't forget to check out uh, the App Depot. So go to docs.akash.network. And then you can also see right here, we have, uh, we'll have links to go to appdepot.io and that will take you to our awesome Akash repo with all of those applications. 
Uh, and if you want to book time with me, just type in easybook.io and you can schedule some time with me to chat and we can walk through these docs or answer questions for you. Um, if you want to see the Pinterest, you go to pin.akash.host. Um, and if you want to see the Gitcoin, uh, please submit to these challenges. Uh, I'll update I'll update all the prize amounts in here. Uh, we're probably going to have uh, a lot of demand, so we're probably going to split it up into first, second, and third place. Um, don't know what the di- what the differences between first, second, and third will be. Uh, we are going to let the community just vote on it. If there's only one winner, that's great. If there's three winners, uh, we'll split it uh, based on the community's vote. Um, so please uh, submit and submit your uh, your SDL files to the re- repository Akash Awesome Akash, and also submit a forum post on forum.akash.network. So we'd also love to see you reposting. Uh, on forum.akasha network so that we can have a place for people to comment and vote on it. So you can see proposals on there right now. Well, I'd love to see a hackathon uh, submission on the forum within the next day uh, showing us what you want, and then we'll give you some more funding. So forum.akasha.network is where you can post your uh, descriptions of your project, uh, to submit for some funding. Um, thank you guys for listening to me talk. Uh, I'm at the top of the hour. so. Thank you, Exiled Surfer. Got through it all. Thanks. Wow. Is that the first drink of water that you're taking? No, that's my coffee. Okay, but is that the first drink you're taking? <laughs> yeah, um, it is actually. Yeah. I I was out a little late, but not that late. So drinking will not be centralized. If you're in Miami, we're giving out these we're giving out these t-shirts. Uh, I think we gave them all out. But the goal here is to build a decentralized cloud. Um, and that's permissionless and censorship free. Uh, so if you, you know, notice anything in the industry, uh, there's been data centers that burned down in France with no backups, Amazon, uh, and a lot of, uh, companies have actually banned different, uh, political ideologies. Uh, so we, we need to move to a network that's not controlled by one giant corporation. We need to have a cloud that can be permissionless and truly censorship free. Uh, but at the same time, this is about building a decentralized web that everyone can contribute to. So it has to be open source. Um, and uh, fortunately, we have all the tools now to do this. Uh, we just need to band together and we need to fund these applications. So that's what we're interested in. Uh, and I, I'm really excited to join Akash six weeks ago and help manage this community and help fund the projects that we need because that's really what the funding is for is to fund these developers that need to build the open source cloud. Uh, so I'm excited to see open source take off and see cryptocurrency really being the driving force behind uh, turning the world towards open source software and open source companies. So I'm stoked about that. Awesome. Thanks so much uh, for, Thank for that workshop. And uh, thanks also for, for, for joining the hackathon, Colin. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day in Miami. Great, great. I'll, I'll be in the chat room for the next hour or two. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep on... Uh, Uh, Maybe I'll go sit by the pool and just chat with you guys. All right. Cheers. Cheers.